think of Harley Davidson, and this is probably the image that comes to mind. A big bike, with lots of chrome, almost 1700 cc, and that classic easy riding style. But the company is trying to shift that perception towards smaller, sleeker bikes as it seeks to appeal to younger, more international consumers. Through the back half of 2015, given the challenges in the, in the United States and the hit to our profitability of our non-US sales, we really took a step back. We, we have this long-standing commitment that continues uh, to keep supply in line with demand to maintain the premium nature of the brand. We took a, a restructuring charge in the fourth quarter. We did a lot of hard work to reposition our resources, both dollars and people. 35% increase in new product development. You know, we're a motorcycle company product really drives the business. So new, new products, more kind of street fighters, maybe smaller engines, all your rivals will be doing the same thing. Is there a danger that Harley is late, late to the party in doing this? Yeah, I, don't, I don't think so at all. I, you know, it's much more of a, of a, of a true lifestyle and a, and a real sort of personal commitment that you get with Harley. So as we invest in, and, and as we already have, products that maybe cover a broader landscape to appeal and reach different types of customers from the reinvestment of our touring platform, which is just a fantastic new uh, statement about our flagship line to the new street motorcycle that's a lot more about uh, new riders and young adults. Uh, you know, future products like Livewire, the, the electric uh, prototype that we took on tour for the last two years. As we make those statements with new products to appeal to different customers, it comes you know, right back to that dealer center and to being much more than just a motorcycle, but a true community of riders of that kind of spirit. So, so new, new products that appeal to younger people and women, electric bikes, is there a danger in all this that you, you risk alienating your core demographic, which is you know, middle-aged men reliving their youths? It's, it's a great question, and actually our approach is sort of both and. So we're not just investing in reaching these outreach customers or young adults through these different types of products. We're also investing to keep our core customers riding longer. Harley brand, as we've said, has a very defined image in the US. What do you think it stands for in Europe? And what do you think it stands for in Asia, which is the big growth market? Mm. In each motorcycle market, you know, I, I worked here in, in England for three and a half years in the 90s. I know the motorcycle market quite well, not just here in the UK, but around Europe. And it is more of a sport bike uh, dominated uh, motorcycle market than say the US and Asia's more smaller motorcycles more emerging. So these are nuances in the market that will affect how we you know, grow and how we invest. Uh, but ultimately it will be around this idea of what Harley means to people and, and continuing to reinforce that as people pursue uh, freedom on a, on a, on a motorcycle. <laughs>